Hello everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. It's been a long that I haven't uploaded videos of MSAT Achieve Chemistry. So now onwards, I'll be creating a series of videos and try to upload it more often. So that will help you to ace the chemistry test with the greater score. So if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do subscribe and click on the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new videos, you will be notified. So now let's start with the questions here, which are sample questions on MSAT Achieve Chemistry. The first question says here, 35.5 gram of iron shot is added to a graduated cylinder containing 47.5 milliliter of water. The water level rises to the 58.10 milliliter mark. From this information, calculate the density of iron. So what is the density by the way? A formula for the density will be given to us. You can see this is the data sheet available for us to refer. Density is mass by volume. So you can use this formula to calculate the density. So density is mass by volume. But now question says mass is known to us. That is 35.5 uh, gram, 35.5 gram. Now what is the volume should I use? Should I use this one or should I use this one? If you read a question very carefully, what they are trying to say, it is something like a cylinder which is already filled with a certain amount of water. So let's take a cylinder is filled with the amount of water that is 47.5 milliliter of water was already filled in it. When an iron shot is added, let's say a block of iron is added into it. So the water level is rising to the mark. They are saying, for example, this is. So water level is rising to the mark from the base up till here it is 58.10 milliliter. Now question is what is the density of it? Now by the way what is the volume here? So volume of the cube density of the iron shot is its mass divided by the volume. Then how do we calculate the volume of iron shot? Volume of iron shot is while volume of the water raised after it adding that is 58.10 minus the vol actual volume of the water that is 47.75 by the way so 47.75 difference between that will be the volume so that is 58.10 minus 47.75 that gives us approximately 10.35 so that is 10.35 milliliter. Now you can use that in this equation. So density is equals to mass by volume. Mass is 35.5 gram divided by volume is 10.35 milliliter. Just put it in the calculator, you'll be getting the answer. So that is 35.5 divided by 10.35. 0.35 which is equivalent to 3.42 3.429 grams per milliliter so that matches with option d so that's how the questions can be asked the average body temperature of a house cat is 101.5 degree fahrenheit what is this temperature in celsius they are asking you simply about the temperature conversion Need not to worry, the formula related to it will be given to us. How do we represent the relation between the degree Celsius and Fahrenheit? Refer to the data sheet. As you can see that the temperature in degree Celsius is equivalent to F minus 32 times 5 by 9. F is representing the temperature in degree Fahrenheit. So use this equation and solve it. So that temperature in degree Celsius is equals to F minus 32 times 5 divided by 9 that is the uh, formula we use substitute that values whatever they has given whatever has been given a uh, degrees uh, Fahrenheit is 101.5 so you can just do it as 101.5 minus 32 this result multiply with 5 by 9 so you'll be getting the answer in degree Celsius let's do that so it's gonna be 101.5 minus 32 this result multiply with the ratio of 5 by 9. So you'll be getting it as 38.6111. So that is we can write it as 38.6111. So you can just write it as 38.61 degree Celsius. 
so answer to this is 38.61 degree celsius is the temperature equivalent to in degree uh, like fahrenheit of 101 a student measures the volume and finds to be 26.2 milliliter 26.1 milliliter 25.9 milliliter and 26.3 milliliter in the first second third and fourth trial respectively which of the following statement is true for this measurement so they are asking us whatever the data has been given to us regarding this which statement is true option a says they have poor accuracy option b says they have good precision option c says they have poor precision option d is they are neither precise nor accurate now to answer to this question you should be knowing the difference between the accuracy and precision now what is the accuracy basically accuracy is the like you know comparing the experimental data with the standard value okay so here a student has conducted experiment four five times and every time he measured the volume as 26.2 26.1 25.9 26.3 and so on right so here these values are not compared with the any standard value then definitely it is not an accuracy because accuracy is always measuring the experimental value with the true value or standard value the comparison of that for example a standard value for certain experiment is 26 milliliter and the someone is conducting the experiment and he is getting the closer value in that case i would say it is a good accuracy but we are not comparing with anything else so accuracy gone then what next then if the experimental data are very close with each other they are said to be precise data so definitely this option goes with option number b precision is basically when you are conducting an experiment multiple times and every time you are getting the same result or very close with each other without comparing to the something else without comparing to the standard value whatever the result you are getting is right or wrong regardless of it if the multiple times you are getting the same result then we say they are precise values so here 26.2 26.1 25.9 they are very close to data that's why we go with they have good precision so this is how the questions can be asked in terms of accuracy and precision the volume of a liquid is 20.5 milliliter which of the following sets of measurement represents a value with good accuracy so look at here we are comparing the experimental data with the 20.5 liter now which are the experimental data closer to 20.5 milliliter those are the data with good accuracy look at in the first option 18.6 17.8 19.6 let's check it out check it out with other as well here it is 19.2 19.3 the closest value to the 20.5 where we can observe here is in option d that is 20.2 20.5 20.3 20.1 they are the most closest to 20.5 so we go with this experimental results are more accurate as compared to other three options so we must go with option d is the right choice here how many significant figures are there in the substance with a mass of 0.042 grams so the you you will be also asked a very common questions on significant figures and also on scientific notations please make sure that you're gonna learn about that so here question is about how many significant figures are there in the substance with a mass of 0.042 grams see there are certain rules to be followed so i'm just solving relevant to this question here so the zeros between decimal point and the integers are not counted as significant figures every integer that is number one to nine are counted as significant figures regardless whether the, whether the decimal point is there or not but if the zeros are there between like you know decimal point and the integer they are not counted as significant figures and zero before that is also not counted unless and until there is any integer that's why these two are not counted only significant figures for this given data is four two there are two significant figures it means two digits by the way so we go with option a there are certain rules please learn those 
what are the certain conditions for the data to be significant figures and all you can also expect in this way and also learn about the uh, scientific notation all right that's it for today's session so in the next session we will be discussing some more concepts please do like share and subscribe to my channel so that when i upload a videos you will be notified thank you so much